Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Gerald Salenti, and we're honored today with ha having a very, very special guest, Gregory Manorino. Gregory Manorino writes for the Trends Journal each week, and he's from TradersChoice.net. And this guy has his hand on the pulse of what's going on in the equity markets and the direction they're going in. And as we're, this is, uh, we're, we're, doing this on Wednesday, June 1st, and it'll be up in two days. So now, looking at the markets as we're going on the air, and the markets were down today, I think, about oh, some three, almost 300 points, and, and now they're coming back a bit. But the big headline today in... Um, CNBC was Jamie Dimon warning that, you know, there's big trouble ahead. Yeah. I forgot the exact words that he said. And, but he's saying basically what, what we've been saying. And, but now that he said it, it's official. And he blames, of course, the Federal Reserve and the Ukraine war. Well, we've only been writing about this now, you know, since before the war started as it was beginning. You look at the, you have that cover of that Trends Journal, Mike? This is the cover of the Trends Journal two days before Russia invaded Ukraine. COVID war to Ukraine war to world war. Talk of peace is forbidden. So what they've done with the Fed and their incompetence and this war with the stupid sanctions that even Biden said, quote, won't deter Putin. They, oil prices just keep going up. And uh, they were up again today, heading toward the $118 a barrel for Brent crude. So, Mr. Manorino, thank you for being here. And let me have your take on what's going on. Jerry, you're the greatest. I didn't mean that. You are the greatest. You're my idol. You've been my idol for years. You're the guy. You are the guy who started me in this. Before I even knew your name, before I knew you personally, I was hooked on you. I'm still hooked on you. Uh, you were the guy who gave me a voice in many ways to start talking about this stuff. You inspired me years and years ago. And I think you inspired, thank you. inspired millions of people around the world. And I thank want to you. thank you for that. It's truly an incredible thing. So yes, let's start off with what you started with. Jamie Dimon, <laughs> I'm laughing. I always laugh at this stuff. Uh, yes, explaining that we are in for an economic hurricane. Can I please get a duh to the people that follow my work? I mean, yeah. the, the double duh, triple duh. Yeah. You can't make this stuff up as an impossibility here. Uh, the economy is in free fall. It's going to get much, much worse, despite the nonsense garbage. Can I say dog shit? Yeah, dog shit is being spread by the propaganda ministries about inflation peaking. We haven't seen anything yet. Inflation is going to surge much higher. Crude oil is going much, much higher. Commodities in aggregate are going much, much higher. People are being meant to suffer by design here, as you well know. Uh, and you must support every single crisis that comes along, trillions of dollars getting thrown over here, thrown over there, wars getting prolonged, uh, more weaponry, more death. And if you don't support these things, you're not a patriot. It's amazing how they're kind of put this whole thing together for everyone. It's, it's an astonishing thing to me to see, but I don't think there's anything that's out of the ordinary. Um, people who understand what's going on, they're going to see a lot more of this moving forward. In my opinion, um, we're seeing a wipeout here of the entire middle class. They're being systematically exterminated. They're going to become extinct. But I don't see any rallies in the street. I don't see people up in arms anywhere. It's the boiling frog syndrome. They're sitting there believing, oh, this is by accident, for which none of it is. Uh, and every single crisis now monkeypox, make that up, and everything else, you know, they're going to keep flinging this stuff at us. It's just not going to stop. Now, with regard to the equity market, uh, crude oil, as we just alluded to, going higher, much, much higher, especially in this environment. And if anyone thinks that's also by accident, uh, I have another, you have another thing coming. Uh, with regard to the stock market right now, yes, we've been in some kind of a corrective phase for the past few months. As a matter of fact, this last month that we just passed was the first positive month 
to the S&P 500 and the Dow since January here. We've had a market that's gone pretty much straight up. You need these kind of phases. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't more losses. I think, honestly, that what do we know is happening? It's always about what we know. We got capital inflows from the institutions here uh, pouring into the markets. We got a lot of short covering going on as of late. Um, and despite the fact that the Federal Reserve is talking about quantitative tightening, which is the opposite of quantitative easing, it's going to be nothing meaningful in my view moving forward. Uh, I still believe that there is opportunity here in the market if you are so inclined and if you're smart enough. Um, but the main thing I tell people to do is, you know, realize that we're in a debt hyper bubble. You need to be taking the opposite side of that trade, understanding what's going on, hold hard assets, physical gold and physical silver. Also, I'm a big cryptocurrency advocate, despite the fact that Bitcoin has pretty much got cut in half. If any of us know anything about cryptocurrency, it's extremely volatile. It's not for everybody. And I tell everyone that. So uh, know what you're doing and know why you're doing it or not doing it. OK, I'm on the same page. And you mentioned Jamie Dimon. <laughs> I got to laugh. Gotta well, laugh. how about laughing at this? You know, one site that people should check out is um, Wall Street on Parade. Mm -hmm. and I'm familiar with this. The Pam and Russ Martin, what they put out, and they just put out an article. What is, J.P. Dimon has been convicted, oh, the, the, the gang that he's running, of five felonies. Five. Is that all? <laughs> no, I, he was convicted of. Yeah, I the know. The other ones they let go by. Yeah. How come that bastard isn't doing time in jail? Oh, you had one. Oh, you know, you're, uh, the, the uh, drinking thing is uh, 0 0.8 and you were 0 0.9. They handcuff you, take you to jail. You do any little minor crime, boy, it's prosecution to the fullest. For we the people of slave landia. Hey, but I'm Jamie Dimon. Who the hell are you? You're just a piece of crap. He's a total piece. He's absolutely too strong. They're too powerful. This is what's going, what people better get in their head. George Carlin, one of the brightest cats around. I know his brother. I still know his brother. Patrick, it's one big club and you ain't in it. Yeah. The whole game is rigged. Rigged. And then you were talking about interest rates look at the clown show that just went on the cartoon uh, cnbc <laughs> with janet fatcha brute yelling yes you yeah. got that right yeah esther they kept going on about inflation yeah we've been writing about this in the trends journal she said back in april 2021, over a year ago, that it may hit 3%. Here's what she said today. What are we at? But what, 8.3, 8.5? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But that's yeah, official, by their, but. By their numbers. By right, their by numbers. The, that's what I said. That's official, but by John William Shadow's stat, it's more than double. More than double. There's no doubt about it. All right, so here's what she said to Wolf Blitzer. What wolf? A little fucking puppy dog that swallows shit. Wolf, wolf. You yeah, fuck off. Anyway, quote, I, <laughs> I think I was wrong about the path that inflation would take. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, fuck, f uh, no, fuck your boot. I gotta be proper. What do you mean you think you were wrong? What do you mean you think you were wrong? How about saying I was wrong? You said 3%. It's 8.3%, and you're saying you think you're wrong? Well, if you think you're wrong, then guess what? You're too stupid to be the U.S. Treasury Secretary. Again, you want to look at a, well, somebody, not on me, you look at this, this woman, and you see what she looks like, and she's running the show? She's, oh, she's, she's, she's a thing, Gerald. And, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, yeah, with this whole thing uh, with transitory, that narrative has been going on. Uh, basically, you know, Jay Powell here, the Federal Reserve Chair, her, they were pushing that narrative since day one. People like you and me exposing that for the lie that it was since day one. Yep. Anybody, yep. even a fraction of a functioning brain cell, would have been able to see that there was in no way this was going to be transitory or contained. And we've heard that before. And they're trying to sell us another lie here, Gerald, that it's peaking. As a matter of fact, we got the Fed's yeah. beige book today. The beige book from the Fed 
but their own their own beige book is saying inflation is still raging here and at the same time they're trying to convince people that it's just miraculously going to get better um what are they trying to do here uh, again it's uh keep the people controlled by dispersing fake news fake information distractions propaganda everything they possibly can to keep the people from rising up because if people really understood what's going on uh, they would be rioting in the streets. No Listen, doubt. you know, you said before about where people aren't doing anything. You know, I want to have a rally of you here in Kingston. And I'd love for you to come. I'd love to come. So let's let's try to get a date. I'm going to get Judge Napolitano here. Okay. Get you here. You know, I have this beautiful, the four corners of freedom over here. I have three pre-revolutionary war stone buildings with a huge garden right on the four corners of freedom. And let's try to do something this summer because we have to let's stand up and fight. I'm all for that. I got a pretty big following, so do you. You know what? Let's do it. Let's okay. actually, I'm, I'm so happy you brought this up because this is, I'll be there. You all tell right. me when, I'll be there. All right. Well, we're, we're going to talk about this. We're going to get it going because if we don't, if we don't unite for peace, we're going to die in war. Oh, here, no, no. here, another little daddy's boy, another little arrogant nothing of a clown if daddy didn't get him there. This bullshit Blinken. Blinken. Here's mm -hmm. the bullshit out of Blinken's mouth today. You, here's the headline. U.S. unveils. Isn't that a nice word? U.S. unveils. Oh, we unveil it. <laughs> 700 million military aid package for Ukraine. We just sent them 56 billion. 56 billion as our country's going down the toilet. Mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. sent them more money than Russia's entire defense budget. Yep. At fighting rages and blah, blah, blah. And here, all right? This is, this is Blinken. He goes on to say, quote, U.S. military assistance will strengthen Ukraine's position to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity secure victories on the battlefield. Oh, wait a minute. You're sending billions of dollars so that they can secure victories on the battlefield with, quote, military assistance. We're in the war. Yeah. Military assistance, victories on the battlefield. If, if you came to me and you say, listen, Gerald, I hate this guy across the street over here. I want to blow his brains out. Could you give me a gun? And you, could you give me some money Bang, so I could buy some money? And so if I gave you the gun and money and you kill the guy, I'm an accessory to the crime. Yes, you are. I'm not a proxy war. I'm in the war. America is at war with Russia. Mm -hmm. We you have lunatics like this little ballless Blinken, a man that would never fight. He would never fight. He'll only send others to go fight because they're cowards. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that wants to support Ukraine, pack up your crap and go over there. I am an American. Yeah. My country tis of thee. Not, not your bullshit what's been going on for a thousand years. You are a whore for the military-industrial complex. Bravo to you. Bravo, bravo. Honestly, I really meant, yeah, that's what, this is the reason why I and millions of people love you, Gerald. It's really the truth. Absolutely. Um, you and me have been warning people that this war is going to expand. It's going to get much greater here. Um, more cash is going to be thrown at this thing than people can possibly imagine. I've, yeah. I've already said it's going to be in the trillions of dollars here. Um, and that is another mechanism to allow central banks to continue to... You afford. got it. Where Be does the cash come from? What, what you just said, Gregory, is so important. After every war, the consolidation gets bigger. Oh, absolutely. After every war, the consolidation gets bigger. They own us already. Mm. And they will, again, we're nothing more than plantation workers of slave landia. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. this other bastard, this as I say, it's Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. Yeah, that's that right. that clown that was the president of Princeton, Woodrow Wilson, 
gave us the Federal Reserve, gave us World War I, and gave us federal taxes. Mm -hmm. Never well, had them before. Well, the, the business of government is obviously not to protect the people, it's to protect itself and to expand. Yep. The number one way to do this is by the expansion of war. Yep. And and they're gonna. This is gonna get really big. I think you're right. People need to be prepared that you, the United States is in fact in the war. They are at war. We are. We're at war. war. And um, they better get hip to that because they, I don't think people are coming down the pike. No. And again, you know, we have to. Again, we're we're going to have a, a festival. We're going to call it a festival rather than a rally. Like and we're it. going to really get this thing going. Yeah. And what we're gonna what again we want to give the people the advice to what they should do. You know. One of, again, just imagine, just imagine that your home is bombed and your city's destroyed and you're a refugee. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. World War II isn't ancient history. No. Europe was at the height of the height and it was destroyed and we're going to go through the same thing. One of my things is GC's 3G's, Guns, Gold, and a Getaway Plan. Yeah. And so for me, and I want to hear what you have to say, Again, I don't give financial advice, I, but for me, gold, silver, and I like Bitcoin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, On totally. the Bitcoin number, we have put the number in the Trends Journal where the breakout points are, and they haven't hit either of them yet. Mm -hmm. So we don't see Bitcoin declining to, and again, what is it, at $30,000 when it started at nothing, so it still ain't cheap, you know? Exactly. It's a lot of dough you made. And so to me, it's, it's to, uh, why would you keep money in the bank? That is so important because you're not getting any interest on it. No. And if they say all of a sudden Russia hacked the banking system, we're closing it down, you mm -hmm. get screwed. Totally. If, absolutely. No doubt. I, 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 I don't like cash. I, I don't like to be in cash. I like to have my cash at work, at least doing some kind of thing here. What people need to understand, and this has been my thing since since I started, since time immemorial is what I always say here. At one moment here, we are going to face an implosion in this debt market. It's the hyper bubble of hyper bubbles. It's hyper very bubble. To understand. Yep. The meltdown in the debt market is is going to destroy the stock market. Yep. It's very simple. Uh, the debt market hyper bubble is, is, is inflating and has inflated, obviously, a massive oh. stock market bubble. Not only has it done that, it has caused distortions across the entire spectrum of asset classes. It's very straightforward. Okay. What's going to end up happening, in my view, very simple. Debt market's going to implode. When that bubble implodes, yep. every subsequent other bubble is going to implode along with it. There are also inverse bubbles. Inverse bubble meaning gold and silver here. And I also want to throw cryptocurrencies into this, and I'll tell you why. This is how I believe it's going to play out, and I would love to hear your input on this. So once cash starts to bleed out of the debt market, putting a lot of pressure on the stock market, you're going to see cash move in like a tsunami into suppressed assets, gold, silver, commodities across the board. And in my view, we're going to see the market capitalization of cryptocurrencies go up multiple fold. You see uh, Bitcoin and cryptos definitely make a move higher here. So I just understand, and it's very simple. See, cash doesn't grow little wings and fly away to money heaven. It looks for places to go. And when we get this implosion in the market, rates are going to spike. You're going to get a massive sell off in the stock market. And the cash is just going to move into, like I said, commodities across the board, gold, and especially silver, especially silver are going to benefit greatly here. What I always tell people to, to think about is in these kind of terms, I believe that it's very possible that an 80%, 80% sell-off for the S&P 500 is Wow. Possible. I believe that is possible because what's going to happen is the market's always overcorrect. And I think that we're going to get a lot of people running to the door at the same time. So the, the potential for a massive stock market meltdown is, is just there. It's waiting for the debt market. Now, right now, the debt market is relatively stable, gauging from what the 10-year yield is doing. That's what I look at. It's the benchmark here. That's why I've been telling people since January, this is not, this is not a crash. This is more of a corrective phase in the market. It would have been a crash if the 10-year yield started to spike out of control, sell off in the debt market. 
To me, the most important thing is to focus on what the action in the debt market. Why? Because it's the biggest part of this entire global market. So by watching the action in the 10-year yield only, you have a good idea of where cash is flowing through the market. But that's how I see it. And you're at exactly on point here. Gold, silver, Bitcoin are going to benefit, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, I want everyone to do their own research, yep. greatly when a meltdown of the debt market occurs, which is going to destroy the stock market cash is just going to move like it always does. Risk on will become worth off. It's always a cycle in the market. It's very simple. Today, um, the 30-year fixed mortgage hit 5.36%. Yeah. So that's double what it was a year ago. Yeah. But much less than it was several years back. Yeah, much less. <laughs> but the market was juiced up by zero interest rate policy yeah. and record low mortgage rates. Yeah. They're going to be raising interest rates. What do you think the breakout point is that the markets and the, the, the equity markets, the real estate markets, and the commercial real estate markets, and you mentioned debt, the debt in the, in the commercial markets is huge. Mm -hmm. And what you have in also the commercial markets, the big cities keep losing people. It's not going to people are not going to be going back to work every day. Mm -hmm. So you have your office occupancy rates down in, Amer in, in, in America. They're down about 60% from what they were before the COVID war began. What do you see the breakout interest rate being where the massive stock meltdown happens? Well, in, in my view, it's, it's very simple. And I think we're going to be able to see this in virtual real time. Now, I tell everyone that follows my work to keep their eyes glued on that 10 year yield. In the current environment, Gauging in my research what the Federal Reserve is doing by nudging that federal funds rate, especially now with quantitative tightening now starting today, um, that the 10 year yield should be above three. Now, what we need to watch for is very simple an uncontrolled spiking in that 10 year yield, like let's say 10 basis point hike, followed by another 10 basis point hike. Bang, 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 bang. Once we see that, 3%, 3.10, 3.2, 3.5, blah, blah, bang, and that keeps going up very, very rapidly, not in a controlled motion, like a, a normal slope. When we see that meltdown, that's the meltdown. That's the trigger right there. When you start seeing that, that is going to put enormous pressure on the stock market. I can't point a finger at when this is going to happen because right now the Federal Reserve, you know, they're playing a, a very dangerous game. They've been playing this very dangerous game for a very long time. You're getting in here, suppressing rates, buying assets. And um, believe me, they're watching the market. And when it does melt down, it's going to be at a moment of their choosing. There's just no doubt about it. And everybody is, is on the right yeah, side. Moment they, of their yeah. choosing. Yep, you're 100% right. They know yeah. exactly when it's going to happen. That's and it. again, so, yeah. when you're looking at the interest rates here, take a look at the EU. No. Are they going to be raising interest rates 50 basis points in July? It'll bring them to zero? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a joke. And these yeah. clowns kept bullshitting us for what? O over a decade. Oh, we have a 2% inflation rate. When inflation hits 2%, we'll be raising interest rates. Yeah. They bullshitted us for how many years? Ten, over, over a decade. It's over a decade. They, because they've done this. This is all by design. They've actually increased. The Federal Reserve, along with other world central banks, none more so than the Fed, has gone out of its way, out of its way to deliberately make inflation soar as it is because they're trying to pressure people. They are trying to destroy the middle class. They're yep. trying to wipe them out. People in the upper tiers of society, yeah, sure, this hurts them a little bit, but not that much. No, you know, it doesn't they, hurt. Yeah. Yeah, they can deal with it, okay, whatever, gasoline instead of all the gallon. Okay, that's what to pay, but you know, whatever, Here's, here it is, you know. Um, but this is, this is a deliberate act. They've gone out of their way to do it. And in my view, with the war and every other crisis they want to throw at us, they're going to continue to inflate. And we haven't seen it. If they, they're trying to now sell us the lie, yet again, that inflation is peaking. We are nowhere near peak inflation. I agree. And here's my greatest fear. When all else fails, they take you to war. They're doing it now. And they're doing it now, and they know it's failing. What followed the Great Depression? World War II. Yep. What followed the dot-com bust? The war on terror. <laughs> Who knows what will follow the COVID war? World War III. Yeah. 
These are the, these people, what everybody has to get in their mind, they are mentally ill. They are. They put on a good act. They don't go like the freak walking down the street. They're pathological liars. They know how to do it very well. Like an mm -hmm. Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner. Folks, <sighs> folks, who's always folking us. Folks, I want that guy Assad out of there. I mm -hmm. want that guy Gaddafi out of there. What makes him any different than the murderers that go in the, in the supermarket or the school? And I'm mm -hmm. saying they put on the act. Yeah. These yeah. are mentally deranged people that are destroying our lives. But we are going to unite. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen right. on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, said Samuel Adams. And we, that tireless minority, Greg Manorino, Judge Andrew Napolitano and others, we're going to be in Kingston on the four corners of freedom this summer and we'll keep you in touch because Absolutely. united we stand, divided we'll die. Yes. Let's do it, Gerald. Let's do this. Thank you so much. And thank you for your knowledge, your insights, your observations, and how really on target you are with all of these, these forecasts that you've been doing in the, in the markets and in the whole realm. And as you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's going to be a massive stock market meltdown. Absolutely. I am, I've been telling people this for many, many years. Just a, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we have a clue for keeping the track of what's going on in the debt market. Okay. Thank you so much, Gregory. Thank and you we'll too. be back soon. All the best. And remember, it's traderschoice.net. Thank you. Thank you, too.